that are so early, but I think I'll go ahead and start. Okay. I uh, want to welcome everybody, uh, all our members and our guests and any new members that we might have out in the audience. I recognize most faces that I'm seeing, so I won't put anybody on the spot. Let's see, that guy back there, is it Mr. Alexander? <laughs> That's our old member, David. Um, so tonight we're going to, uh, our agenda will be... Uh, the club announcements and our safety minute from Phil. We'll do a demonstration, which Mike Erickson's getting ready for, and it's uh, turning angels on the lathe, which you can see some examples of right there. Um, we'll take a short break after the demonstration and uh, have refreshments and fellowship. And that's also when Mike will make his last round of uh, dollar sweepstakes uh, opportunities i guess and then we'll draw right after the break and go on to our challenge table which our uh challenge prize again this week is going to be another threaded insert that you can work into your projects i have yet to see a project that's had used one so i'd like to see somebody bring one in that they've used um and then we'll go into the show and tell uh starting with our club announcements uh I know everybody's probably anxiously waiting news on a uh, new location for the Guild and for the Woodturners Club that's uh, going on. It is progressing. Uh, there's a site being uh, negotiated or, or talked through, worked through, uh, that's not too far from the shop here. It's on down um, Southwest Boulevard, just a little ways from the 31st Street exit there. Um Nothing final yet, and no date has been set as of now. So we don't really have a lot of information other than we've been told that rent will likely go up considerably when we move. So we've got to kind of get ways to prepare for that. Um, and more information will be provided to you as we get it. Uh, just an update that our current rent has increased by $45 a month through the end of our, our lease here. Um, which was expected. That wasn't new news. Um, our club added a couple of new members over the past or the last month, so that's good. Um, and Mike Erickson, our demonstrator for tonight, also has been working to complete and has completed a plaque to recognize the uh, KCWT members who have passed away. Uh, these members are the inspiration for a memorial scholarship that we're starting. And the scholarship's intended to cover the cost of a hands-on class taught here at the, at the shop. So it's really kind of geared towards uh, new members, but it, any member is open to apply. So um, we don't have a class set or a date set for our next class yet, but that's probably the first time that we'll have the opportunity to award that scholarship. Um, this is a... Oh, the application and the donation tab, if you wanted to donate to the Memorial Scholarship, uh, are both found on the website. So uh, take a look next time you're on there and see if you can find it. Um, let's see. Help support the club by participating in the Dollar Sweepstakes. We've got another uh, face shield to give away this, this month. So uh, see if you can get a dollar in there and take your chance. Um we did, or I did, I showed up for the second Saturday because this last Saturday was the second Saturday of this month for the second Saturday social. I brought donuts and about three or four of us sat around and ate donuts. <laughs> so we didn't have a big turnout, but um, I'm going to keep it going. I'll, I'll, I'll do it the next month. And if I don't have people showing up, then I may turn it to more of a quarterly type thing and, and just spread the time out in between there. So I don't. Uh, my, uh, I'm starting to gain a little bit in my butt and I, from eating all those donuts. So I got to maybe move that a little bit out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Let's see. Uh, if you have any ideas to improve the club, uh, I would encourage you to talk to one of the board members, uh, board members that are here. If you raise your hand, there's a lot of us here. So Feel free to talk to any of us. Any idea is a good idea, um, just in terms of moving the club forward. Uh, we do have a lot of 
help needed. Um, you've heard me ask uh, several months in a row now that we've got a open club secretary position, and I would love to see somebody consider filling that. It's an important position for the club to have. It shouldn't be open. Um, I'll tell you that the board will do whatever they have to to assist you in kind of mentoring you into the position. But um, if you're interested, see Kevin or myself or Mike, any of us uh, board members, and and we'll uh, fill you in more on the on the position. I'd I'd really like to see that filled over the next month or so. Um, the club also still needs a few shop openers. We've been able to cover it so far, but. We're thin on openers, and we also need some backup people. So if you uh, could commit to a night a month or a, a Saturday morning in of, of the month, uh, let me know, and we'll see if there isn't a spot that we can fit you in. I think I've got two Wednesdays of the month that are currently open. Um, Anthony and I have been kind of taking turns filling those, and then... I, we've got two Saturdays now uh, that are open, and David Alexander's been filling that between him and Daryl. They're here most Saturdays, but they they have situations where they can't always be here too. So, um, again, talk to the board members if you'd like to help. Let's see. And we're always looking for demonstrators. So if you've come across a project that's kind of fun, uh, you enjoy doing, and you think you can turn it into a demonstration for the club, please consider that and talk to Mike, and he'll get you on the schedule. Oh. Oh. Uh, we're going to be in the process of kind of getting things starting to pack up and, and starting to maybe try to purge some items. And in doing so, we'd love to have uh, any totes or tubs that anybody might have laying around that, that is available. If you want to just drop them off in the shop, uh, we'll use those for packing up and, and organization as we get ready, geared towards the move. So not, not an immediate need, but if you come across something, uh, an old tote or tub that you, you're not using, uh, we'll use it. Um, oh, this Saturday? Oh, one more thing uh, before I go on to the picnic. Um, Mike Erickson is also going to bring in a sample one of these days of a, t a new T-shirt for the club. It'll be similar to this one, but Mike had the brilliant idea of putting the five rules of wood turning that are in there on our wall on the backside. And I think that'll be kind of fun. So um show a hands of if you're interested you would be interested in having getting a t-shirt for the club yeah probably be in the 20 dollar range and what we'll probably be doing is getting your commitment before we put in the order so that we're not over ordering or anything we'll probably order a few extras but uh we'll stick to those that want some so more information coming on that um this saturday june 17th is the annual Kansas City Wood Turners picnic at Shawnee Mission Park. Uh, shelter number six, is that right? Yes. Okay, shelter number six down towards the dam, right off the lake. Always a cool breeze, even on a hot day, it, it stays cool. We got a uh, um, nice shelter there. Um, the members will bring sides and desserts, uh, and the club will provide the hamburgers, hot dogs, and all the fixings for that and uh, bring your own drinks. If you can remember, I'll, I'll bring some extras, but uh, usually that's, that's something that we don't provide. We don't know what everybody wants to drink. Um, usually we start showing up around 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, I'll start cooking. Mike and I are, are, are designated cooks and we'll start cooking around 11. So plan on eating by 1130 or so don't, don't show up at 12 because we'll already have half the food gone by then. Uh, usually done, yeah, easily by two, uh, depending on how hot it is, sometimes earlier than that. But stop by for some uh, good food and some good uh, fellowship. Um, and on the horizon, not too far out, is the 2023 Irish Festival. Uh, we've got a tent already paid for or I, I should say a spot for our tent already paid for. 
in August, we plan to get a sign up genius created so that everybody can sign up for some volunteer time. It's one of the biggest sales events uh, for our club. So um, we really need member participation. It's a three day event and uh, it'll take a lot of us. So consider that it's coming up around Labor Day weekend. Hopefully you'll be in town. It's also a great way to get uh, a uh, entry into the Irish festival and check out the whole Irish festival if you like that too. Um, upcoming meeting demonstrations and classes uh, are July. Uh, demonstration is going to require you all to bring in and present small items uh, that you've turned that might be items that could be sold at events such as the Irish Festival, thinking in terms of items that you could put out there for less than $50 or so. Um, so it'll be just everybody bringing in those ideas, showing everybody what they got and giving everybody some uh, ideas to go forward with. Uh, and hopefully then we can get some donations. What we'll be doing is in August then, asking for the challenge items. If, if you can donate an item for the challenge into the Irish festival sales, the club will certainly appreciate that. Uh, August, uh, I think we're, Mike's going to look into possibly getting an IRD set up for August. Uh, we don't have anybody specific yet, but as that formulates, we'll let you know what's going on there. And then Anthony is planning on another spindle turning class. Um, probably late summer, early fall. When I get a date nailed down on that, I'll let y'all know. And as all you know, uh, if you're looking for information about the club, one of the best places to go to is the website, uh, KansasCityWoodTurners.org. Um, if you go into the column on the left, you can find all of the kind of current events and things that are happening, as well as links to all the members and everything. Um, another good way is to ask a board member. So um, ask any of us if you've got questions. Our uh, demonstration tonight will be Mike Erickson. He's going to show us how to turn angels on the lathe. But before we get into Mike's presentation, I'm going to give Phil the microphone and he's going to give us another safety minute this month. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> uh, so I did want to take a minute, hopefully, to talk about safety. Uh, last uh, last month with my chainsaw demo, I failed to show you the first aid kit that I bring with me whenever I use my chainsaw. It's two pieces. One is this cute little bag, and it's got everything you might need for a minor cut, abrasion, headache. Pretty, pretty simple stuff that you might find in just about any first aid kit. But the important part is this right here. It's called a bleed kit, and this has a uh, one-handed tourniquet in it. Raise your hand if you know what a one-handed tourniquet is. All right, you can Google it, um, or I can show it to you later here, but it's essentially a strap that you could put around an appendage that might be bleeding excessively where you need to actually cut off that bleeding. So with the chainsaw, it's very important uh, that if you do have an accident and you are bleeding from an appendage that you don't want to lose, um, you may need to stop a flow of blood, and that's why this is super handy. Now, I also encourage you to have a first aid kit in your shop, and the reason why that is is because accidents happen. Um, whether you are maybe unsure how to use a tool or do a process properly, you've never learned it well, maybe you're you're very cautious about it, you're, you're not very confident in your ability, or maybe you're overconfident and you get a little bit lax in your safety, and then you end up getting your finger caught in a bandsaw and having to go to the emergency room. I don't know anyone who's done that today, but I know someone who did that earlier this week. So in your shop, I recommend you have some kind of a first aid kit. It doesn't need to be super fancy. This one hangs on my wall, and I rarely ever open it. You can see how nice and clean it is. It should be dustier probably. Um, and this is I have this because people come into my shop um, that I might teach or work with, and I want to make sure I've got everything I might need. The important thing in here besides your basic band-aids and things, is that you do have gauze pads that can soak up a little bit of blood um, and uh, and a few other things like an ice pack, those kinds of things in there. So I recommend you have a first aid kit. If you're going out with your chainsaw, I definitely recommend you have a first aid kit and potentially a some kind of a one-handed tourniquet or other bleed kit just in case 
hopefully you never have to use it. Uh, but if you have questions about first aid kits, uh, feel free to chat with me later on. Thanks. Thanks, Phil. And uh, everybody should know that there is a very nice first aid kit, as well as a first aid kit on the wall in, in the shop. Uh, so we've got a traveling first aid kit that we'll take with us to events. And then we've got a big uh, cabinet on the wall there. So they, they are around. With that being said, there is an AED uh, uh, defibrillator, and it's important to know that we have one. I thought it was over here. Yeah, it's over here on the wall. Um, important to know that it's around. If you're ever in that situation or somebody, you know, goes down on you, then you'll know where to go. Uh, it is self self-explanatory. As soon as you start it, it'll start giving you instructions. So, um, don't fear it, use it. That being said, I'm going to turn the mic or he's got his own mic. I'm going to let Mike take the mic and give us a demonstration. Mike okay. Erickson, thank you very much. uh now okay i can't hear myself so safety i swore i put a pair of safety glasses that i wear that are bifocals in my bag but evidently i did not so i always wear safety glasses when i turn so tonight i'm breaking my own rule so i watch a lot of youtube wood turners what's that oh excellent Now I can see. So I watch a lot of YouTubers. Uh, I watch everything from using resins to uh, steel restoration tools and toys and, of course, wood turning. And to the people, about eight that I like watching is Mike Peace. He's down from Atlanta, Georgia. And another one I watched was B&B &B Turning. And that's where I got the ideas for making the angels. They're not my original ideas. We all uh, borrow or steal ideas from other people, which is fine to me. So this is some of the first ones that I made. Um, you can use any kind of wood you want. It doesn't, you know, This these are made out of cherry. Um, this is cherry maple. And then these are from the flute wood. And I'll hand these out. You can kind of look at them. So there's really two parts on the bigger ones. is the body and then the wings. Now I'm going to attempt in 45 minutes to show you how I make these. So I've got a blank set up. This is a baseball bat blank from Jaw Bats. Uh, and I encourage you all to go back uh, into the shop tonight and take some with you. There's four big tubs full. Uh, some of them are short, but anyway. So we're going to get right off turning. First thing I'm going to do is... Now, I do turn with my bracelets on. I've done it for a long time. You're probably... You're not supposed to do that, but... I've been doing it, and I'm pretty good. So I'm going to rough out the head first. And a lot of this project you can do with a roughing gouge. I really like this roughing gouge. It's a uh, harder. I want it, or I bought it at a, a auction we had here. When we used to have auctions. So that's going to be, I think that might be long enough for my head or for the head of the. So we're going to take a pair of calipers 
and a pencil. I'm just going to measure this real quick. This does not have to be a sphere. I don't know too many people that have a perfectly round head, except for maybe Charlie Brown. So we're just going to make a couple marks. Put my other one there. It is. Then I'm going to make a mark kind of in the middle. Nothing, nothing too fancy about that. Grab my half inch spindle gouge. And we're just going to start rounding over the top of the head. This is great wood. These baseball bat billets are really nice to work with. Was making one the other night, one of these, and it had a crack in it. If it's only one of two, it wasn't that one. It's this one. Had a crack back in here. And that's I've only turned two of those that have had a crack in them. Those come from Canada. <clears throat> is where Jaw Bats gets them. They're on their way to the College World Series in Omaha. Tomorrow they're leaving. Baldwin. Speaking of that, for right now, we're going to be done with making the shot glasses and the baseball bat pedestals. They've got enough already. So we don't have to worry about making some for a while. Pardon me? Says twenty one eighty eight. I tend to get to a point that I think it's good, and then I start shaping the body. And I leave this nib on, hopefully I'll leave it on, to the very end. We might even get out the dreaded skew here in a minute. <laughs> I don't want to break the last rule of wood turning, which is what, Anthony? Yeah, the last rule. Exactly. Don't cut what don't need cutting. To me, that means don't take off too much because what's the there's the other rule is you can't put you can't put it back on if you've already taken it off, which I don't think any of us have ever done that before. So I'm just gonna make a taper. So we're gonna work on uh this shape here, this one. Got my spindle gag. Kind of clean up the what I call the neck. So the one that I handed out that Mike Peace did, which was this one. This one is just basically a rounder shape. You turn a disc, kind of tapered, and then you uh, and then a taper here. And then go to some way, I sanded these off with a, um, my stationary belt sander, and then you sand them off. These are supposed to be the wings. You can really get in and start hogging off. What you're not going to need. Is that a dog? Did anybody else hear that?
when you get down here, you want to make sure you don't you slow down because you don't want to hit your chuck. Because you'll be stopping and sharpening. And that maple is hot when it comes off there. Kind of rough back here. Okay. I'm going to get out the dreaded skew. And we're going to shape the head a little bit more. I apologize in advance if a few bad words come out. I don't know. 42? 42. I think the better finish you have on your pieces, bro, right off the tool, the less sanding you're going to have to do. And I hate sanding. I hate it with a passion. 43. Okay. Everybody get the idea? The proportions is, I kind of think, is that the head should be maybe just slightly bigger than the, the shoulder. I have been playing around with more of a body form. Um, I started making these when Cindy's, no, not Cindy. Who's the gal? Hey, uh, Wendy's dad was here and he did the, the female forms. You guys remember that? Is anybody out there awake? Okay. Anyway, so th these are the last three that I've made and I've been playing around with, you know, like this is the first one and second and then this one i made last night so oh the other thing is you don't have to make them big you can make them out of pin blanks these were really the wings were really for me were really hard to make okay so you got the body made you're going to cut that off you're going to sand it you're going to finish it and i use white ketchup and a friction now this is uh uh mylan's sanding sealer and I keep it in this bottle because I like the bottle and then I use a friction polish on top of it after I put the sanding sealer on it dries real quick then I will um, take a scotch bright pad and I will denib it you know just rub it and then I use the friction so I do that all while it's here and then we're going to turn it around we're going to finish the bottom through the magic of television, we're going to finish the bottom of that one that I made last night. This is a uh, one of the easy wood chucks. I like it a lot. It's expensive, but I like it. It's really heavy. So let's see what we need here. We're going to use this jam chuck. Lock that down real good. Up. So this is a Nova Life Center system. It has this really long, nice point. I really like this a lot. Uh, you can use it like this. It's got other points that go in it too, um, but it's made by Nova. Yeah, thanks for asking. I meant to say something. Wow, that's pretty true. So I'm just going to use a spindle gouge. We're going to take off the tenon. And hopefully it's not going to fly across the room. 
but get ready. I reduced the speed down quite a bit. So if it does come off, it only bounces a couple of places. There we go. Look at that. Almost perfect. That must be on my side. So you've got your body done. And I take it over to my stationary belt sander and I, I make a little flat spot on the back. Most of these woods, you'll have uh, like a face almost on it. And I try to get that to show in the front. This one, I got a little cockeyed. So this angel is going to be looking over this way. But that's okay. I tried to pick the best side. So now, hello there. We need to figure out our wings. <clears throat> Are we somebody talking or that's weird? I'm gonna take this out because I've used a few band aids on my elbow and arms. make a little workstation here we'll take this off we'll take this out i don't need that anymore i actually wrote a script so we're going to figure out the diameter or the size of our wings and i do really I, i'm not a very good visual person and i'm bad with proportions but i have this little circle template and I'll just take, I'll take the body and I just set it up here and I look and I go, oh, about a six inch diameter wing. Looks good. I think it should stick over. Some of those don't go over the head as much as, you know, maybe they should. Six inches is going to come down about two thirds of the body. So six inches. So how do you make, so then I make a pattern for the wings. And if I can find my, so can you see that? Is that up there on the overhead? I need to move it. Does that show up? Turn the light off. Okay. Maybe if I do this. We borrowed this board. It is off. Yeah. So what I do is I take a piece of graph paper out of my box. Maybe I should just hold it up. Is that better for you guys? No? Okay. Anyway, I draw a center line and I draw a six inch circle with the compass. Pretty simple. I usually draw a little bit bigger piece than just six inches, and I draw a circle. Then I go over to my wood pile and I look for a piece of wood that's going to fit the bill. We'll get that in a minute. So you've got a circle, and then I fold it right on that center line, just like that. And I get out my fancy Fisker scissors. This is going to be the top. This is going to be the bottom. I just cut out a shape. Whatever I think kind of looks like a wing. That looks like dog do. You can come up with lots of different shapes. So then I take the pattern and I put it up against there, the body, 
and I don't like it. So then you, you're going to need a top part for head clearance. So I cut out that, and then I make a cut up. And the nice thing about doing it on a pattern is that it's easily changed. I mean, you can adapt it to whatever size you want. Then you can put it on there, and you can say, oh, that's, I want it to stick up further, and it's not enough for the head. So you just do a little bit more cutting. The tips, I try to round those over some, too, because you don't want a sharp point, because those usually break off. So then I take it back, and I put it on there, and I go, that's all right. So there's my pattern. This is the pattern that I made last night. So I go to my wood, wood pile, and I put it down here. I draw a circle, same size diameter. Draw a center line. I draw a cross line. You don't need the cross line, but I draw a center line. I go over to my bandsaw and I cut out the circle and I end up with a circle there. Okay. What you're going to end up with if you make a lot of these, and I usually don't make just one, you're going to end up with a folder maybe that has lots of patterns that you can use for later on. You can try these different ones. These are all wings that I've made through the last couple of years, and I just keep them in a folder. So we'll stick that one in there. And a lot of times I'll reuse, if you can tell, I've reused the same. That one kind of looks like a bat wing. But. Okay, so you've got your pattern. You've got your piece of wood cut out on the lathe. And now we're going to make a wing. And making a wing is a lot like making a platter. I think I took Anthony's platter class. Did Anthony have a platter class? Anyway, everything I know about making platters, is that okay? Came from Mr. Harris. I'm going to set this over here. Now this is on here with this double stick tape. I buy this on Amazon. It's really good tape. It holds really well. It's pressure sensitive tape. It holds really well. I don't have any qualms that this is gonna come off. No, it might. Um, I get it on Amazon, $12 for a roll. So just in case, we're gonna put this back on here. here I got 20 minutes make sure that you get it on their tight does everybody put the set screw do they always you guys always set your set screw in there and tighten it I don't either I must have not got all the way down. So we're going to finish rounding this off. Because it's like turning a bowl. You got your grain is going this way. It's not parallel to the lathe. So this is like this is just like turning a bowl. So we're gonna do the outside part. First, we're gonna put a tenon on here so we can do the inside. I usually take these down to oh three eighths inches. You don't want it flexing too much. I don't turn too much Purple Heart. I remember the first bowl I turned was Purple Heart. Halfway through, I was sweating so much. 
I said, I'll never turn purple heart again. Now I marked out my tenon on this piece. I heard something I don't like. Hmm. Heard kind of a cracking noise. You're always supposed to turn the lathe off when you if you're a new turner, always turn the lathe off when you move your tool rest. Unfortunately, us old guys don't always do that. I have gotten in trouble doing it, not doing it. And basically, I'm just kind of doming it. That's a word. I'm really not too worried about the finish because it's going to be sanded after we make the wing. I don't sand it until after I'm completely done. Okay, we'll go with that for tonight. And hopefully I didn't make this too small. When you make a tenon, you want that intersection right there to be nice and crisp. Somebody really smart taught me that. Okay. Let's see how we're doing here. We'll be all right. Okay. So then we're going to take this off. What did I bring? Hmm. I didn't bring anything. Yeah, putty knife and a mallet. You could use um, hot melt blue if you wanted. And denatured alcohol works really well to take off um, hot melt glue. I've got about five strips on here. Probably put too many. So what's that, about a quarter of an inch? Thought I stuck something in my bag, but I guess I didn't. Thank you. Let's see if this will... Take it off without breaking it. If not, well, I got another one. I have a tool that I really like. It's a it's called a painter's friend putty knife. It's tapered, does like eight different things, and I use it all the time for stuff like this. Ah, there we go. So we're going to take the tape off so it doesn't gum up my tools. Fifteen minutes. Phil Phil said if if I'm not done by eight o'clock, he's leaving. Actually, I think my wife is watching me at home. Shout out to Miss Beth.
Okay. This stuff is really good. It's really sticky. Uh, Amazon. LLPT. I just looked up double stick tape. I know you don't want to use carpet tape. For sure. Anybody know what this is? Spanner wrench. Yeah. Plumber's tool. And I don't have fancy wood at home, so I just use plywood to. But I do like it on these bigger ones that the wing, you know, it's fully supported or pretty much supported rather than using a little piece. And then you get a lot, sometimes you get a lot of vibration. So I'm going to use this. This is this is one of my favorite chucks. This is a record power. I think it's called a G2 or G3. Jerry Darter turned me on to him. He bought one and I saw it. I said, I got to have one of those. And I love it. I mean, I absolutely love it. And you want to use, you want to chuck it up so that it's pretty small. Your, your spigot is pretty small because when you get ready to do your wing, you're going to put your pattern on there. And I use an air saw to cut out these, cut out the wings, cut this out, cut this out. So you don't want to be hitting your chuck with your saw like I have a couple of times. So if you decide to use a different chucking me method, you know, I mean, you may do a, just a, um, like just a, a, what do I want to call it? Like this and glue, a glue block. Yeah, a glue block. And then you could turn the glue block down before you, or you could take it off completely. And that's the wrong one. Take it off completely and just cut it by hand or do that a different way. This is not absolute way you have to do this, but. I don't know. He talks funny. He actually will make a dowel or turn a, a dowel so it can go into the body and we're going to make it sing so I usually start on the out I always start on the outside and just go in I just keep working my way to the inside so I don't get too much of that harmonic distortion. Is that what you call it, Anthony? What's that? Harmonic vibration. Like that. And as I work down towards it, I'm trying to keep an even an even thickness all the way down until I get down to the bottom. Because you're going to want to leave enough that you can drill into to help support the, the wing onto the body. Let's turn this light on. Oh, it is on. There we go. I have like five lights. I got 10 minutes. Isn't that a pretty sound? So a lot of the, uh, well, all the sanding I do off the leg. So I got a new tool. This is a D-Wade negative rake scraper. It's called the 150 big ones, but I like it a lot. I'm gonna raise the tool rest up a little bit. 
see what it does with Purple Heart. Can you hear that okay? Just trying to use a really light touch. Not bad. Not bad. They get down towards the bottom. I tend to kind of flatten it out a little bit. And that depends on the size of the body that I make or I have. The thicker piece you have, the more you could have it, you know, wrap around the body, of course. Quite a bit. Yeah, quite a bit of thickness there. Well, you can do this with the bowl gouge. I just wanted to show off my new tool. Okay, we'll call it. Nope. Because you're going to do cutting now, and eh, it's still pretty thick. I mean, you can if you want. We both will have tools like this with the set screws on them. The chips get down in there. Turn it so the set screws are down and the gouge, the cutting edge is up. Somebody said that on a, on a video I was watching. I went, duh. You know, just simple stuff. Okay. Now we're going to have some fun. I guess I shouldn't mention how much that tool costs if my wife is watching. I might be I may be sleeping outside tonight. The whole thing, yeah. Okay, so this is a Trent Bosch carving stand. I love it. Until I, uh, no, I don't, I've had it for quite a while. I didn't use it. And then I started doing more little carbon stuff. And I mean, it'll, it'll swivel like all over the place. I don't think they're really that bad. I mean, it's up, down, you can turn it around. So when I do this, 
where we at? I can't scoot it that far. I try to have the grain, you know, running this way to the pattern. And if it's got a fancy pattern to it, you know, some feature that I want, I want to make sure that when I put the pattern on that I'm not going, you know, I want to include that. So I just put the pattern on there. It's a little, the pattern's a little bit bigger. And I just trace it. Usually I use the pencil, but I just grab the pen. We're just going to trace that. You know, you made the pattern, so you have artistic license to do do it whatever way you want to do it. Probably gonna leave quite a bit of that. I'm gonna put a little curve in there. Okay, so now I have that done, and I'm gonna grab my other cool tool. This is a Harbor Freight Air Tool. Cool. If you haven't got one and you like doing stuff like this, I would. It's basically an air jigsaw, is what it is. So my chuck is clear down in here. Probably not going to hit it with this. So we'll see what happens. Here. Uh -huh. Don't tell me we're running out of air. You always want to have it down in a piece of wood so that it doesn't skip out. Don't do that. Okay. Now we're turning around. No, I'm going to do this side first. This doesn't go down as far as mine. It goes almost all the way down. My jet will go almost all the way down. Yeah, but it's no, it's hitting the bar. I always try to keep this part of the tool on top. I mean, you can cut with it the other way. I just have more a little bit more control that way. At least I think I do. Now you could do this with a coping saw. There's lots of different ways you can do it. Uh, 
Okay. So you got your general shape of your wing. And now the fun part starts. So I take this over to my uh, belt sander and I sand off the tenon as much as I can. Then I take it over to my drill press and I'll put in, and I'm not gonna do it tonight, but I'll put in a, a sanding disc, whichever one would be the best shape. And I sand that up. Um, don't make too many ones that are square. I don't know why I was thinking that. I probably will take this. I have a strip sander, so I'll take it over and sand this up, do the edges. And then I sit down with my orbital, my sander, not orbital sander, my sander, and my sanding disc, which I was going to talk about a little bit. I think David and I have both found out if you want some really good sandpaper, look into this Cubitron. Is that what's called, David? Yeah, this is really good stuff. It's made or it's distributed by Taylor Taylor Tool out of Columbia, Missouri. It's really good stuff, um, and it's not really that expensive. Um, so I'll put that on my sanding disc, and I'll sit down and I'll sand it. By hand, start at 150 and go up to 200 or 300 or whatever I need to do. That will take a lot of these, well, take almost all these marks out of here. Um, so, like I said, I hate sanding, but it, it takes me probably, I probably spend, oh, it's hard to say, 45 minutes sanding one up from beginning to end. I don't spend a lot of time sanding it. And then I go back with the white ketchup, the sanding sealer, Milan sanding sealer, and the friction polish. Um, the one with the arrow in the back, I just use wax. I stole that from Anthony. I just put paste wax on it. Sanding sealer and then paste wax. Um, you can make these out of any kind of wood. Uh, if you go down to Shooties, sometimes in their bin, and their scrap bin, you may find some gem of some wood. This is maple. Look at that. Look at that figure in that. You make an awesome wing. Um, but anyway, I, I use that. I usually will do contrasting woods, as if you haven't guessed already. A light wood and a dark um, wings. Uh, or vice versa. There is some of this walnut back there that Jerry Darter brought in. You could use those. Or sometimes you have to, if you need a big enough one, you have to glue one up. So I just glued up maple and walnut and made a big enough one for this one. This was a three inch piece of cherry I got from Got Wood. That's another good place if you want to get something special or some. Wood someplace. Got wood is a good place. How'd I do, Phil? Okay, I think I'm done. Anybody questions? None? No. Huh? No. Um, well, let's see. Shall we make it make an angel? With a wing or without a wing? Whichever way you want. We have plenty of baseball bat billets you could make a little one out of. Okay. Thanks.
On I yep. <laughs> the challenge next month is to turn an angel with or without wings. So Oh, it can be a fallen angel. <laughs> we won't get into that part of the discussion. <laughs> no horns, Andrew. No horns. No, I thought. All right. Well, thanks, Mike, uh, for for demonstration. And we will take a short break here and have some refreshments. And uh, if you would like to get 